Good afternoon and welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor and my guest today is Marge Gibbs from, it's it's Leash and Collar, correct? Right. Dog training. Yeah. Marge has been training dogs almost as long as I've been doing humane work. As a matter of fact, she dealt with one of mine many, 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 many years ago and she's wonderful. She's wonderful. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit today about mm -hmm. bringing home the new puppy which could happen with the new dog as well, but it seems like I'm seeing people every day now with new puppies. Puppies. Summer's coming, everybody's running out, they're mm -hmm. getting a puppy, this is the time. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. in two or three months, we will be seeing a lot of those puppies in the shelters. Mm -hmm. People can't handle them. So, Marge, impart your genius. <laughs> uh, puppies. Uh, basically, I believe the statistics still hold true that the typical go a dog coming to a shelter is between six and nine months old. That is just after the puppy time. And puppy time, I'm talking about dogs that are under six months, they're juvenile dogs. They are a lot of work, folks. Uh, it takes a lot of patience, takes a lot of time. And quite often people are unprepared for that factor as a new little puppy comes into the household. This is our biggest problem. Uh, with puppy people coming in, uh, they usually know a little bit about housebreaking and that it's going to take some time. Um, they will put up with some accidents, but they also hear from different sources that it's not that hard to potty train a dog. Well, it takes a lot of supervision to potty train a dog. You can't have him running loose in the house while you go off to work or go out uh, to do your own thing and leave him loose in the house. It's not only potty training, we're hearing from people, he bites and will say bandages and they will say, no, he just chews on us. That's what puppies do. Uh, so puppies use their mouths, they will mouth the children, they will mouth you, and those little teeth are like pinpricks, it can hurt, nobody knows what to do. It's usually not addressed in books or on television shows, what do you do about this? It will not go away by itself, you do have to handle it in some way, shape, and form. And then the chewing on the household, the whole house seems to disappear for a lot of people. Uh, before that puppy has been taught, and he needs to be taught. He doesn't learn by himself. He'll only do dog things. He has to be taught how to behave and have the social manners we want in our homes and in our society. And I've heard mm -hmm. he tore the wallpaper off oh, the yes. wall. Oh, yes, yes. All of it, it was grass cloth, and it's <laughs> now in strips on the floor. My window blinds have been destroyed. There are teeth marks in my antique dining room set. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and ultimately what happens, tragically for the animal, mm -hmm. is that it comes into a shelter. Yeah. At best, yeah. it comes into a shelter. Yeah. At worst, it winds up on the street mm -hmm. in a forest preserve. Let's dump it in a forest preserve. Somebody will pick it up and take it home. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, it winds up dead. It's, 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 it's terrible. So, what do we do? Not us. We know, because we're brilliant. <laughs> what, how can we help people who don't know? Oh, I had to laugh, Sherry, because a babysitter of our, mine, uh, decades ago, I'm a grandmother now, uh, uh, basically uh, came home, we came home, and she said, oh, your puppy was so good. He was lying out in the hallway for... A solid three hours. He's such a good boy. We went out in the hallway and the wallpaper was ripped up <laughs> from the bottom up. Sure. It was the era of the floxed wallpaper. You know, mm -hmm. remember that type mm -hmm. of wallpaper? Oh my lord. Uh, but this is the type of thing you deal with. I can laugh about it. Most families do not. They don't know how to cope. Uh, the first thing when a puppy comes into a home, um, they should see a veterinarian. Uh, we have uh, people who say, well, the puppy has had shots from breeders or he came with uh, a vaccination record from wherever they got the puppy from, uh, get a well checkup from your doctor. Uh, then the next thing you do is please, people, find a good puppy class, one that will not only have you socialize the puppies to other dogs uh, but base or people, but basically will also teach you 
uh, the mechanics of housebreaking and mouthing and chewing and what you do on the home turf to cope with the situations that every dog owner goes through when they're raising a puppy, including your trainer. Uh, oh, yeah. You deal with it too. Oh yeah, of mm -hmm. course. And then there's the issue of crates. Mm -hmm. um, I've been told that crates are horribly mm -hmm. punitive, nasty, terrible mm -hmm. things, confining, mm -hmm. and and I've always crate trained every puppy I've ever yeah, had. Yeah. Because, for two reasons. Number one, my house was safe when I wasn't home. Well, three. Number two, the puppy did not want to urinate and defecate in his own bed, mm -hmm. so it was much easier to house train. And number three, the puppy was safe. Mm -hmm. People don't stop and think that there are electric wires. Mm -hmm. Puppy's going to chew anything he can get mm -hmm. his little mouth on while he wants to chew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not safe. Mm -hmm. It's not safe. No, the crates are your best friend. Uh, and I've heard it too, uh, and including from some of my peers, you know, that uh, uh, why crate train, keep the puppy, watch the puppy, blah, 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 blah. No, uh, a crate is a place of safety. Dogs are denning animals. They like to be someplace where they're comfortable, cozy. Most dogs look on their crate as their little room, their little suite within your house. Their safe place. And they can go there. In fact, even puppies quite young will quite often run to their crate if there are two or three uh, preschoolers running around the house at the same time and the dog says, where do I go to get away from them? They can go to a crate. They can be safe there. Um, uh, crate training will help 100% with housebreaking. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's your best friend. So uh, confining the puppy, and people will say, "Well, we want him to be free," and we say, "Freedom is earned." Yes. Yeah. And you do want him to be free when you're there to interact with him and watch him. Mm -hmm. You don't want him to be free when you're when you're not there because that's when he's looking for exactly. trouble. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're not around to watch the puppy, the dog will revert to dog behaviors, and that would be the chewing, the investigating. Got to go to the bathroom. Where will I go? Usually they will hit uh, a carpeted area. The that's oriental clever. rug. Yeah, that's clever from the part of the dog, the, the dog's brain. It's like, oh, this is absorbent, sort of. So I'll go there. That's a nice, clean place to go. And uh, people should be really cautious of this. You talk about the oriental. Uh, this is a former client. Please don't be listening to this. But uh, she had big plastic sheets all through her house. I had to go out there and I was helping her privately with housebreaking with mm -hmm. adult dogs. They had learned to go on her very expensive orientals. She had plastic sheets throughout her main floor covering the floor and they would just mop up over the plastic. This to me is, is uh, no, it needn't have happened if they were supervising the dog. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, <laughs> My, my pet peeve and, and, and my real important is it's not enough to put the puppy outside and expect it to know that no. it's supposed to go potty out there? No, he's going to do other things outside, maybe eat the leaves and chew up the grass, pull your plants out, do whatever. Chase a chipmunk. Um, you want to correlate the actual action of going with the command word. Uh, you can use potty, out, make, doo-doo, whatever you want to use. Make good doggy, sweetheart. But when the sweetheart. puppy is going, we will... Not too much excitement. We will reinforce him, and with dogs that uh, basically maybe have been going in the house quite a bit, I will use a, a food reinforcer outside as soon as they have gone, not a half hour later. That time frame to connect with the action Which is means so critical. You need to be out there with the dog exactly. when you put the dog out. You need to watch, yeah. especially if you've got a, a place that you'd like that dog mm -hmm. to potty. Yeah. You want to put the dog over there, and the dog will wander around, and you put the dog over there, and the dog will wander mm -hmm. around, and finally the dog's <laughs> going to have to urinate. Dog urinates. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good boy. Good pee-pee. Good <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah, and then a nice treat. And But it doesn't work, f and I've heard it, if I've heard it once, I've heard it 30 times. Well, I put him outside. And then he came right back in and, and, and peed on the floor. Did. Yes. Yes. Yes, that is common. Uh, people weren't out there long enough. They didn't give the uh, puppy time enough. Sometimes kids will take the dog. Everybody is involved with the action. But whoever is taking that dog out should wait. And if the puppy does not perform outside in my household, that puppy is kissed sweetly. He's done nothing wrong. He's put back in his crate. And we'll take him out later. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I loved my dog's crates. They became their dens. Mm -hmm. And long after I needed a crate in the house, mm -hmm. 
Those crates stayed in my family room with the doors open. Mm -hmm. And when they when they were uncomfortable or unhappy yeah. or there was a thunderstorm, into the crates they would mm -hmm. go. Apropos, every time my dogs went into the crate, they got a chew toy and a cuddle toy in the crate with them mm -hmm. so that it was a good place. And I never said, you bad dog, you peed in the house, get in your cage. Right, right. Exactly. Because then the cage becomes punishment. Yeah. And then the crate has lost every bit of value that it ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a punishment, it's a safe place. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing to have. And it shouldn't be so big the puppy can go to the other corner and urinate and defecate and then come back to this corner and lay down and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah we've, had those. we've yes. had those. We want to give him a lot of freedom. Well, if the crate is as big as a room, the puppy is going to have freedom all right and he's going to go in the corner over there and then come back and sleep over here. It needs yeah. to be big yeah. enough for him to stand in and turn around in exactly. and maybe take a couple of steps. Exactly. That's it. it yeah. That's it. Exactly. Anything else? that for we puppies. need to tell people for puppies. Uh, we can touch on puppy mills. Um, if you see a puppy advertised on Craigslist. Be cautious. Or anywhere on the internet. Be cautious. Or often in the newspaper. Be cautious. Be very cautious. Be cautious. There are uh, local places, uh, AKC, you can get a list of breeders of specific breeds. Uh, there are shelters in the area that quite often have litters of puppies. Uh, call around to the local shelters and you'll get a little bit of a background on these puppies that at least is better than just flying blind. And if you Being insist very, very on cautious. a pure bed from a breeder, which I very frankly have never done because I think shelter animals are wonderful and they need us, ask to see the mother mm -hmm. and the father yeah. or at least one of the parents Make sure that it was locally bred. Mm -hmm. See where it was bred. Mm -hmm. Don't buy it online. You'll be encouraging an extreme cruelty and probably winding up with a sick puppy to boot. Anything else, Marge, in a half a minute? Be patient. <laughs> be patient. This too shall pass. Uh, but the dog really does need an early education. Uh, to me, that's extremely important. Uh, it's my profession. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's so sad for my peers to see people coming in and we are the source of last resort. Uh, if the puppy uh, uh, comes to you and you think you can handle it by yourself, we'd say, think again, uh, uh, get yourself into a puppy class that uh, also gives you help with household behavioral problems, a little bit of obedience, a lot of socialization, and people who really understand the dog's uh, body language characteristics, read specific things. And it also gives you somebody to call and ask. <laughs> 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 Nothing like being in demand. I think we're about out of time. Can you give people a number that they can reach you at? Leash and Collar can be reached at 847-945-4514. Uh, and that you train in Riverwoods, basically? We're, we're in, uh, yes, that's the only place we have our location, and that is 238 Saunders Road in Riverwoods. Uh, if you do get online, we have never had time to put in a website, uh, but if you do get online, they do list uh, my home as Leash and Collar, but that's because my office is in the house. That's not where I actually train dogs. It would be wonderful before you got a puppy if you went into a training, a trainer, a puppy class somewhere, if they would permit you to observe, mm -hmm. just to get an idea of what goes on and what would be good for your puppy. It would be great to talk to someone unless you absolutely know what you're doing. And even if you absolutely know what you're doing, you know that the puppy needs to be socialized. Big time. Bottom line. Uh, I can't think of anything else to ask and I know I'm out of time. Mm -hmm. So, okay. <laughs> we're going to take you to Save a Pet now. We're going to show you some of the dogs and cats that are waiting there for you.